Lauren was a confident young lady who was full of life, optimism, and compassion. She laughed often and lived every moment of her life to the fullest. In 2011, Lauren completed her senior year of high school and was looking forward to attending Elon University in North Carolina. Sadly, just one month after graduating high school, after leaving work one day. Lauren's life would be taken in a brutal attack that would shock this community and devastate two well-known families. Welcome to Viral Crimes. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for more stories. Lauren Astley spent her childhood in Wayland, Massachusetts, with her mother, Mary, and father Malcolm. When she was just six years old, her parents got a divorce, but they agreed to share joint custody of Lauren which was their only child. Lauren attended Wayland High School, where she dated fellow classmate, Nathaniel Fujita. Nathaniel was a star football player, and the two looked like the perfect couple. The couple dated on and off for three years, but just as Lauren was about to start a new life, after graduating high school, she realized that the relationship was not working and called it quits. Lauren reported for work at her job at the neighborhood mall on July 3, 2011, as scheduled. She was seen on video entering the mall at around 9.45 in the morning and exiting approximately 6.45 in the evening. It was anticipated that Lauren and her huge circle of friends would get together that evening but none of her friends had any contact with Lauren in quite some time. A friend reported to a group of her other concerned friends that she and another friend had spotted Lauren's automobile, a red jeep, at the beach. Lauren was not present in her vehicle, but the windows were down and her computer and pocketbook that she often carries with her were inside. This was very alarming to her friends, so her friends got together with her family and traveled to the beach in an effort to find her. In addition, a call was made to the police. The police questioned Lauren's friends when they were all at the beach about whether or not her ex-boyfriend, Nathaniel Fujita, was capable of hurting her. The police already paid a visit to Lauren's ex-boyfriend Nathaniel's home and spoke with him and his mother. Even though Lauren's friends were aware that Nathaniel and Lauren had just broken up, they didn't believe that Nathaniel would harm Lauren. Both Nathaniel and his mother said in their statements to the authorities that Nathaniel was at home alone at the time that Lauren went missing. The 4th of July came around and Lauren had now been missing for 12 hours. None of her friends or family had heard from her. Sadly, Lauren's body would later be discovered in a swamp that was around 5 miles away from her house. Lauren had been choked to death and her throat had been slit. A bungee cable was also discovered entangled in her hair at the scene. The cops found out that Lauren and Nathaniel had been dating for close to three years and Lauren ended their relationship with no hope of reconciliation. Mary, Lauren's mom, reported the relationships as having frequent highs and lows. Lauren had intended to go to college in North Carolina, while Nathaniel intended to play collegiate football at Trinity College in Connecticut. It looked as if the couple had finally decided to go their separate ways, but following the split, Nathaniel's demeanor altered significantly. At the graduation celebration that Lauren and her classmates attended in June 2011, Nathaniel appeared very intoxicated. One of Lauren's friends recalled that Nathaniel had made an effort to speak to Lauren. After she said no, he became frustrated and hit a pole that was supporting the enormous tent they were in. Nathaniel was told to vacate the premises and unfortunately, Nathaniel would kill Lauren just one month later. After Lauren's body was discovered, the police had another conversation with Nathaniel and his mother. They claimed this time that Lauren had stopped over to see Nathaniel when he was at home by himself. The last text message sent by Lauren was sent at 7.05 p.m. The message was addressed to Nathaniel and it simply said. Here. With a search warrant in hand, the police searched the Fujita residence. What they would find was a treasure trove of evidence. They discovered bungee cords and a stain that tested positive for blood. They also discovered a black gym bag in the basement of the house. The officers opened the bag and discovered a pair of tennis shoes that were soaked in water and covered in dirt. In addition, Nathaniel had concealed another pair of bloody shoes along with other bloody apparel in a crawl space that was located in his bedroom. The laboratory confirmed that the blood sample was a match to Lauren. Nathaniel Fujita was taken into custody on July 5, 2011, and charged with Lauren's murder the same day. 
According to Nathaniel's family, following the breakup and graduation, he stopped going outside and stopped hanging out with his friends. Concerned for his well-being, Nathaniel's mother asked Lauren if she could go talk to him and see if she could get through to him. Lauren agreed and that is why she showed up to Nathaniel's house. She was trying to help him. It is reported that Nathaniel murdered Lauren in the garage. After that, he took her red jeep to the beach and put her keys in a storm drain, which was where they were discovered a short while later. Nathaniel went back to his house, picked up Lauren, and then took her to the marsh in his vehicle. After that, Nathaniel cleaned up the crime scene. There was never any indication of domestic violence in their relationship, according to Lauren's relatives and close friends. On the other hand, they did mention that Nathaniel had a tendency to be possessive and aggressive at times, particularly after he had been drinking. According to the authorities, Lauren's death was the result of violence that occurs during a breakup, the call this type of violence breakup violence. Lauren had been considering ending her relationship with Nathaniel for some time before she made her decision. It was something that she had spoken over with her friends, and together they had even compiled a list of arguments for why she ought to. A few of the grounds for this were the fact that he was hostile, that he was unkind to his mother, and that Lauren's mother and friends did not have a favorable opinion of him. Nathaniel Fujita was brought before a judge on February 13, 2013, to face his charges. The argument put up by the prosecution was that Nathaniel murdered Lauren because he was upset that she had ended their relationship and that they would not be getting back together. William Sullivan, Nathaniel's defense attorney, reported that his client was responsible for Lauren's death but explained that his client suffered from mental illness. According to him, a diagnosis of serious clinical depression had been made for Nathaniel and that Lauren's death was the result of a psychotic episode he was experiencing. The defense attorney said that, when Lauren visited his client, Nathaniel, he did attack Lauren in his garage, but he was unaware of what he was doing to her because he was experiencing a psychotic episode. The prosecutor did not agree that Nathaniel was unaware of what he was doing. The prosecutor believed that since Nathaniel was aware enough to hide Lauren's body out in the marsh, put her keys in the storm drain, and then attempted to clean and dispose of the evidence to prevent him from being caught. She claimed this was proof that Nathaniel knew what he was doing. Nathaniel's actions during the June graduation party were described in detail by Lauren and Nathaniel's friends who testified in court. According to what Nathaniel's buddies have told them, he just stopped hanging out with their circle of friends. After a trial that lasted over three weeks, the closing arguments were read on March 5, 2013. The jury met for deliberation for just a single day. The jury decided that Nathaniel Fujita was guilty of premeditated first-degree murder. He was given a sentence of life in prison without the chance of ever being released on parole. After the decision was handed down, Lauren's dad still grieving from the loss of his own daughter, went over to Nathaniel's family and gave them a hug. Mary, Lauren's mother said that all she wants to know is the reason Nathaniel killed their daughter and how long was he planning on taking her life. Family and friends honor Lauren's memory by the development of the Lauren Dunn Astley Memorial Fund. The mission is to promote dynamic educational programs, particularly those in the areas of the development of healthy teen relationships, the arts, and community service. What happened to Lauren was a real tragedy. She was trying to save someone she cared about, and sadly that person would take her life away from her. My condolences to her friends and family. I can't imagine the pain you have experienced. May you continue to heal. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.